Conway Wench. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. In the limited time we have, I want to get to a few specific questions. If, if, firstly, in relation to Brexit, if Britain leaves the EU without a trade deal, would the WTO tariffs apply? And in particular, would they apply on the trade between the north and south of Ireland as you see it? I think I answered the question. Again, I don't want to speculate, but I gave the spirit of the negotiator. So uh, I really need you to, 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 would you see that the WTO tariffs would apply between North and South? I'm sorry to say again that I cannot comment on the outcome of the negotiation that not, not yet started. Okay, and you can imagine how significant that is to us in terms of what's happening. Commissioner, you're quoted uh, uh, Yes, but uh, let's not be in the what-if position. Yeah. Because I think that's not the right yeah. one to start a negotiation. Yeah, but you we know... Want, we want the negotiation to be concluded yeah. fast uh, and in the better conditions. We are not uh, looking for plan Bs, plan Cs or uh, catastrophe scenarios. But you'll have to forgive us, Commissioner, because we were in the situation previous to the, the banking crisis well, that where we had so little of our sovereignty, we had so little to use in terms of defending ourselves as a country. Uh, and we do not want the same thing to go again. And as legislators, we have a responsibility to make sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed to ensure that the Irish people are protected from the European project in what has happened uh, previously. But, Commissioner, your quote is saying that Ireland cannot even discuss the post-Brexit customs arrangements uh, with Britain, and the EU Commission says it understands Ireland's position, but it doesn't seem to understand that this is a divided country and that the national priority is to prevent a hard border re-emerging to cement, to re-cement that border. And I'd ask again, what are you going to do to stop Ireland talking to Britain at that stage? As I said, everybody can discuss with everybody. I'm talking about the legal framework that is common to us. Ireland is not a third country. Ireland is a member of the European Union. Ireland is a member of the Eurozone. Uh, and so when our negotiator, Mr. Barnier, who was here before, will negotiate, he will act in the name of the 27 member states. All of them each of them. And of course, we will always act uh, in uh, the control of the European Council and uh, the Council at its various uh, levels. So there will be a constant control uh, on, from the Council to the Commission and from you to the Council uh, through your own government. And, and one last word. We are certainly not, and if uh, I was understood that way, it was misunderstood trying to really establish a solid border. And we know that this is a divided country. And I said precisely the contrary, that we will take on board the specific situation of Northern Ireland in this negotiation. Okay, I suppose the devil will be in the detail on that. But again, you'll forgive us. I mean, as late as today, we see that the situation in Germany with regard to inflation and what might need it to be done in terms of quantitative easing or adjusting that again uh, within the European project. And again, we are looking at how that is going to, to impact on, on us in terms of, of interest rates and all that. But as a EU Commissioner, uh, which of these options do you see as realistic if Britain leaves the customs union? Uh, firstly, that a customs post on the Irish border. Secondly, that no customs posts in Ireland but customs on the island of Britain. Or thirdly, uh, are a customs border between the European mainland and the islands of Britain and Ireland. Or do you have a prepared option? Mr. Banya is the negotiator, mm. and again, I'm not going to speculate on the outcome of that negotiation before it starts. Uh, and we are a collective body, and we are uh, defining our position collectively under the control of the Council. Right, okay. There's many more questions and answers. In relation to CCTB, uh, this Parliament has already given its view on CCTB um, that it goes too far and is not necessary. Politically, that would be the, the view of the great majority of the members of, of this Parliament as well. Uh, and you're here, obviously, on a charm offensive to, to, to sell CCTB. 
very difficult to pronounce it. Uh, but your scouts who are here uh, recently gave the game away to the, this committee um, that this is changing in a very fundamental way our corporate tax system. Would you have, uh, we would have to adopt a single rate corporate tax, wouldn't we, as was said previously? Um, is it compatible with the 12.5% rate, but only as a, a single rate? And is that the case? We just would then have a single rate of taxation? I, I wouldn't say that I'm here in the charm offensive. Uh, <laughs> well, I, you're doing I'm, just to, I'm just trying to convince uh, and to develop uh, the position. Uh, I think that you need uh, to enter into that discussion, I would say, in an open approach. Uh, I'm not saying it's perfect, and it's not the end of the game. It's a proposal, and I wanted to uh, really <coughs> tell you that it has advantages and benefits for the whole of the Union and for Ireland too. But again, I will be op pro opened to proposals, to amendments, to improvements, and I will be, of course, uh, not only listening, but taking into account uh, your government and your parliament's remarks. Because in the end, you decide. I don't. Uh, the, 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 the people often think that the Commission is the government of Europe and that there is a kind of diktat from Brussels. No, there is no diktat. There are proposals. We are not the government of Europe. We are the ones who are the driving force for the general interest. But finally, it is the Member States who decide through the Council and in the tax matters through unanimity. So it is very clear. If uh, Ireland, in the end of the day, doesn't want the CCTB, it won't happen. But I think that you must look carefully, precisely, at that new proposal to see how different it is from the previous one. What could be the advantages of such a proposal? And what could be the improvements? I can understand that you have worries, preoccupations, and specificities. For the two, and, and, and again, I repeat that there won't be any harm made to your tax sovereignty. So why did you, and I just to finally just say, why did you uh, uh, then present the original proposal when it was going to be so detrimental to the Irish economy? I think that was a quite good proposal. Uh, it was discussed in the Council. It couldn't reach an agreement. Then we had, as a Commission, two attitudes. Either we would have proposed the same or three attitudes. If we would have proposed the same, the response would have been the same. And uh, we have to take on board the remarks made by the uh, Irish part specifically. And when I speak to uh, my Irish counterpart, Michael Lunen, he agrees that it is a different proposal. It doesn't say, of course, that it's proposal. I don't want to uh, be a spokesperson, and spe especially to say things that it doesn't say. The second attitude would have been to renounce. We didn't want to renounce because we think that's really good as well for fairness, simplicity, uh, anti-avoidance uh, cause and for business. So the third attitude was to propose a new CCCTB. That's what's on the table, but it's not, again, uh, the end of the story, it's the beginning of the discussion, just like for Brexit. Okay, thank, thank you, Senator. Senator. Thank, thank you, Senator. Senator. Uh, thank you.